so this is talking about Lubuntu. Um, we're going to go through sort of the history of Lubuntu, just a brief history of it, and then we're going to go through what is actually going, going on going forward here. So who am I? Um, I'm the Lubuntu release manager. Um, I'm a member of the Lubuntu Council, and I am a Lubuntu member. Um, you may be wondering, what is Lubuntu? Lubuntu is a lightweight, simple, energy-efficient di Linux distribution using LXQ based on Ubuntu and built for you. That's our tagline. So a bit of a short history of Lubuntu. Lubuntu started out, um, I believe it was 11.04, where it was the, um, the first official release. It started out using LXDE as the default desktop environment. We had a, a smaller team. We had um, Julian Laverne was our main developer at that point in time. And we had the, the release manager, um, Walter Lapchinsky. And this progressed forward until we reached a bit of a point with LXDE. Um, so it, it got to the point where we had LXDE. It was, they were looking to port from GTK2 to GTK3, and they found it wasn't really as resource efficient as they would have liked it to be. So the Razor Qt project was started um, based on Qt, and it actually it, it aimed to actually re-implement LXDE in Qt um, because of the efficiency measures there. So LXQt is the, the hybrid of LXDE and Razor Qt that was founded, um, I, I want to say it was about 2015, 2016, when that was first started up, um, the initial alpha versions of that. And essentially, we, we had a decision to make within Lubuntu. So I got started in Lubuntu at about, what was it, 2015? So at that point, we were still using LXDE. We still had it in our long-term support releases, but we wanted to switch to LXQT. And essentially, we needed somebody to actually step up and take that, take that effort forward. Julian is, is, is focused on LXDE, and it's, it was his passion. And we needed someone to, to actually drive that direction forward, and that person ended up, ended up being me. So I became release manager. It, it was, I want to say it was 2017. So we decided we were going to switch to LXQt um, at the 1810 cycle. So this gave us enough time between the 1804 long-term support release and the 2004 long-term support release to be able to get this polished and ready to go for our users. So what has Lubuntu become, and why didn't you change the name? So Lubuntu, of course, stands for the the lightweight flavor of Ubuntu. A lot of people think that it stands for the LXQ flavor of Ubuntu. We really focus on being the most lightweight flavor out of all 10. And essentially, this comes with a lot of effort to make sure that the applications we include by default are efficient. The, the user experience is efficient, lightweight, and modular. So we, we, did, we were asked to change the name, and we decided not to. Um, we decided to, to go forward with this direction here and just continue to use the Lubuntu branding because our mission really hasn't changed. Lubuntu used to be focused towards older hardware. It used to be the distribution you put on older computers that you, that you put on you know, i386 machines or PowerPC machines, et cetera. And it's, we sort of transformed that vision. We looked at the amount of computers that were still i386 in the market. We looked at the amount of PowerPC machines that are still in the market, and we realized that a lot of these are aging. And we decided to make the decision, we're just going to go with AMD64, and we're going to slightly refocus. We're going to focus on modularity and just making it the, the experience efficient rather than catering to those, those lightweight machines. And that's not to say that you can't put Lubuntu on a lightweight, on an older machine. That is still one of the goals that we have. It's just not our main goal anymore. So with Ubuntu, or with Lubuntu 28, or 18.10, sorry, we decided to take this new direction. And it was a bit interesting. Um, we... For the installer for um, Ubuntu, Ubiquity, we had some, some issues actually getting it to work with LXQ. So we decided instead to do something that no other flavor has done before in Ubuntu's history, which is to switch our installer. So we switched to Calamares, or Calamare, in the, um, in the 1810 cycle, and we did our best to make it work. So a bit rough around the edges to start, all the way through the 2004 cycle. And we, we really have been focusing on polishing that experience and, and fixing bugs. 
So at this point, you may say, well, the bugs are fixed. What do we do from here? So we decided to take it to the next level. We decided to contribute to the wider community more. We decided to lead new efforts within the Ubuntu project more. And we want to make Lubuntu, Ubuntu, and the wider community the best it can be. We have a pretty, pretty solid team at this point. Um, in 2017, during sort of that transitional period, we founded the Lubuntu Council and we wrote the Lubuntu Constitution, especially, or this, this means, with, with Lubuntu's governance structure, we are a democratic meritocracy. This is a bit of an oxymoronic statement if you just look at it at surface level. Essentially, this means that we are a meritocracy, we, we depend on the people that are higher up who have the experience, the, the knowledge to make these decisions, but we also value input from the community, input from our members, input on how we can make things better. And it's not solely the, the decision, it's not solely my decision, really, it's the decision of the Lubuntu community, and we really, community is something we keep in mind all the time. So on the, on the subject of Calamari, um, that QR code has some more information about it. Essentially, if you'd like to know what distributions use it. At this point, um, from my recollection, Debian's, um, Debian's Live ISO uses it, Manjaro uses it, Endeavor OS uses it, some Fedora spins actually use it. It is the cross-distribution Linux installer. We find this effort to be very productive for the wider Linux community. So as you'll see in a little bit here, we've added some features to Calamari to, to enhance it, to provide bug fixes to it, to make, to make sure all of these distributions that use it have a solid starting ground. And if you're looking to start a Linux distribution and you need an installer, this is the installer to use. So we've, we've really taken a lot of these features and enhanced them. This has happened between the 2204 cycle and the 2404 cycle, which we're currently in. So we've added a couple of different items to make the user experience better. When somebody installs Lubuntu on a machine, essentially they're, you know, they're, it's a little bit of a, of a light experience, a little bit too light at times. Now, of course, our goal is still to be the lightest flavor, but we want to enable people to actually be able to do their work on Lubuntu in a more efficient manner. Um, so a couple of different things we did. Um, Active Directory support in Calamares. So the Ubuntu installer does have support for Active Directory. You can enroll a machine in an existing Active Directory server. Um, and this is something that Lubuntu has been missing for a bit of time. And this cycle, we finally decided to implement it. So that pull request is upstream. All distributions that use Calamari will be able to, to actually utilize this support here. Um, I personally wrote it. I personally tested it, and it's, it's solid. So it allows, it really allows Windows administrators to have a, a, a better idea of, you can enroll a Linux machine in there, you can try it out, you can have it as part of your existing network without having to redo your entire Active Directory structure. We've also added a customized menu. Now this is unique to Lubuntu and the other flavors that use Calamari. Instead of the simple option of full install, standard install, or minimal install, um, we have additional options, so you can choose to install um, several apps like Krita or Thunderbird right from the installer. And we've en done some engineering to actually make this, this effort work um, better. Essentially, the, the, um, the back end for snaps, to install snaps, I won't get into the, the overly complex details of this, um, but essentially the, some of these checkboxes within the installer, they're installing snaps and we, I've been working with the technical board on the requirements for how exactly we want to, to do this in the most sustainable way. And I've also been working on, um, you know, with the SnapD team a little bit here to, to ensure that all of that goes smoothly. There's some just technical difficulties that nobody's really ever found a, a solution for them yet. That's, that's what we're looking to, to do. Um, so LXQt and our implementation. So we are currently shipping LXQt 1.3 um, in, of course, 2404, um, the upcoming release. This is 
in, in recent LXQ releases, it just has been bug fix. So it's based on X11 and um, Qt5. LXQt's goal really is to be window manager agnostic. It's supposed to be modular, um, upstream. They really, they really focus a lot on that. Going forward, they're really going to port to Qt6 and Wayland. That is the upcoming goal for um, the, the upcoming release. Now you may say, oh, Wayland's. Of course, Wayland's. It, it's, it's, it's gotten a lot better. I was skeptical of Wayland's. I was very skeptical of Wayland's. And you look at the support from Red Hat on this front. You look at the support from Canonical on this front. And there, the efforts on that really have paid off in the last couple of years. And we're really looking to extend this and, and make it better for, for our users here. So we've had a, we have a couple different user experience improvements coming up in this release as well. Um, now the Qt6 stuff and the Wayland stuff, that's going to happen next cycle. As I mentioned earlier, we look at things from a two-year perspective. If, we, if we're shipping a long-term support release, we understand that most people are going to install that. They want something stable on their machine and they don't want to have to upgrade every six months. Now, this, is, this comes with advantages and disadvantages, of course. If you're not using snaps or any other, you know, flat packs or anything else, it, you are potentially using older software. At the same time, we can guarantee a higher level of stability with these, with these items. So the user experience improvement specifically in this release, so we have a Bluetooth manager now within Lubuntu. Um, simply, we, we haven't had a graphical way to pair earbuds, and this is something that I've had, I've personally struggled with. I wanted a way to do this. I didn't want to have to open the terminal every time, so we wrote it. Um, Redshift. Basically, it, this is a blue light filter for, um, for Lubuntu. It's a very, very lightweight one. It's opt-in. Um, so if you're using your computer at night and don't want to be kept up all night, go ahead and, and, and use Redshift. So the installer prompt as well, um, essentially, with that, we have a screen, first boot of the live ISO. It allows you to pick your language, which also changes on the live session. That isn't a thing that Ubuntu Desktop even has. Um, it also allows you to, um, with the installer prompt, so it's the languages, and of course, of course I forget the, the other item there. Um, oh, Wi-Fi connections. So all of that is right within the, um, the installer prompt on initial boot. It's very, very lightweight. It looks good. Um, and localization. We've, we've done a lot of work to make sure anyone who speaks any language really can use Lubuntu. So we've done a lot of work with the, the menu itself, um, our applications to ensure that the proper settings are taken care of, and just general polish to make Lubuntu the best it can be while still maintaining that lightness that we have. We've also added a couple of themes. So this is somewhat minor compared to the other items, but now there's an additional opportunity for themes within the, the Lubuntu ecosystem. Um, of course, the, these are LXQ themes. Um, you can also install any GTK theme, any, any Qt theme, really. And we've really done a lot of work with the GTK look and feel as well. So when you install a GTK application on Lubuntu, it no longer looks out of place. It follows the same exact branding. Um, I believe we use the Breeze theme um, straight from KDE. And this is really, this is just our goal to, to polish everything um, to make it a better user experience. We've also been working on the Lubuntu manual. So essentially there's a QR code right there. We're looking to document everything you can do with Lubuntu within, of course, within rational bounds, but the installation process fully documented using basically every application shipped by default in Lubuntu fully documented. Um, Simple system administration tasks, documented. I would definitely recommend, whether you, you use Lubuntu or not, scan the QR code, otherwise it's at manual.lubuntu.me. This is something that one of our team members, Lynn, has been working on very, very intensely, and I give her a lot of credit for it. It's, it's good. Um, we also have an icon. Now, it just goes to a web browser, but by default in Lubuntu, um, you can just double-click that icon, and it'll bring you right to the manual. Does anyone need a second to scan that? Okay. All right. Um, the future is very, very bright for Lubuntu. Um, 
we're really working on the next two years will be focused on making the Qt 6 experience and the Wayland experience the best it can be. Now, of course, with this being a long-term support release coming up, we really don't want to add too many items that we can't support for that long-term uh, period. Of course, Lubuntu is supported for three years. Um, regular Ubuntu is supported for five, um, just the standard thing. And with Ubuntu Pro, you can add five plus years. Set. So what I've been told is it's, it's going to be 12 for this time, but it's not official yet. It is official? OK. I'll run with that. So, so essentially, it's, we're really looking to, to polish this LTS release, get it out the door, do as much bug fixing as we can, and then our development efforts are going to shift directly to doing that Qt 6 and Wayland port. Now, again, there are tons of concerns in the community about what is this going to mean for my user experience? Am I going to install Lubuntu on my machine? Is it, is it not going to work? Really, we're looking to, to leverage a lot of this new community support around Wayland. We're looking to understand the issues um, and, and act on them, really. And our goal, really, by 2604 is to have this seamless where somebody could upgrade from 2404 to 2604, have all that configuration transferred over, and have a seamless experience that they won't even notice they're running Waylands. And of course, it's, a, it's going to be a little bit of an uphill battle, but we have the resources. We have, we have the people looking at this as well. And we're also working with the Fedora LXQ folks on this effort to make sure that it's not just Lubuntu doing this. It's going to be the, all of the distributions that use LXQ. Otherwise, for 2604, there really isn't much else. Um, we're going to be looking to port that Bluetooth manager all the way to Qt. So we're going to have this lightweight Bluetooth manager available, something that's outside of the KDE e ecosystem. Um, other than that, we're looking at polish, improving our processes, and onboarding more people onto this effort. That's really where our main focus is going to be, besides the purely technical items. I went a little bit quicker than I thought I would. The QR code is there, lubuntu.me slash links. That has the link to everything um, within the Lubuntu community, whether it's our Twitter, Mastodon, Matrix Space, which I would definitely recommend joining, um, or you know any other social media we happen to have. It's all on that page. And when anyone asks, well, where's the Matrix links, or where's this, I always point them to this page. At this point, I'll ask if anyone has any questions. I have one. Yes. You're looking for contributors. I have a couple of friends who are educators, mm -hmm. and this is so useful in so many environments. Um, is there an opportunity for educators to contribute uh, education-specific content to what you're doing? So yes and no. Um, there is a flavor called at Ubuntu, and they focus on, on um, providing that educational experience for people like that. And it's not to say that you couldn't install those, those sorts of applications on Lubuntu. In fact, that's really what it's meant for. You would install Lubuntu on a, on a very lightweight system. And in fact, one of the reasons I really like it is because you know, I compile software all day. It's something that I, that I do. And essentially, it's I want a desktop environment that is as minimal as, as it can be because I need all the resources I can to compile my software. And this, compiling software really is just the beginning of what you can do on Lubuntu. Um, graphical editing, video editing, a lot of different items. If you have lower powered hardware or if you have um, a virtual machine somewhere, maybe on the cloud, if you want to mass deploy it, um, this is the, the distribution for you. Um, so in terms of contributing, um, contributing to Lubuntu in that aspect, I would definitely recommend talking to the Ed Ubuntu folks, seeing where they're at. Otherwise, for contributions specifically to Lubuntu, the desktop environment, et cetera, you will find information on how to do that on our links page. I'll pass that along. Thank you very much. Other questions? So I just have a clarifying question about the document yes. documentation. Do you want it, say, as verbose as Archer Gentoo? I'm sorry, say that one more time. So would you want the documentation to be as verbose as Arch or Gentoo? 
Probably not. So the, 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 the aim for the Lubuntu manual is really to provide something for the average end user. If you look at the Arch documentation or the Gentoo documentation, it's pages and pages and pages and pages and pages. Now, the Lubuntu manual isn't short, but it's readable. It's, there's screenshots in there, there's you know, specific how-tos in there, and our, our goal really is to document everything a, a user would need to know and, and provide that quick reference. And that's not to say that the Archer Gen 2 guides are bad. In fact, you can, you can use a lot of the items on the Arch Wiki or other wikis to help your, your work in Lubuntu. Um, it, it's a matter of focusing our efforts into, you know, into documenting what's specific to Lubuntu. And if there are items that are, are for Ubuntu as a whole, we've been putting those on the Ubuntu Discourse instance. So the Ubuntu Discourse instance is where we're focusing a lot of our documentation efforts. If you want to see documentation for Ubuntu, if you want to contribute to documentation in Ubuntu or in Ubuntu as a whole, Discourse is the place to be. Discourse.ubuntu.com. I definitely recommend everyone have an account there at the least. Um, you'll, you'll find discussions on there. Um, you'll find documentation on there. Quite a wide variety of items, including um, the recently added uh, events, events page to that as well. Any other questions? Uh, still on the topic of documentation, and I know you mentioned that Wayland was not for this release, but for the next one. But Correct. will there be an effort to document Wayland so that a human person can actually understand how that thing works? Because that is currently the reason why, personally, I can't adopt Wayland because its documentation is atrocious. Mm -hmm. Uh, so will there be an effort there to make it understandable to the average user, even to the average admin that, you know, doesn't want to jump immediately in API calls and compositors and stuff like this, like explain what it is, what, how it works and why it's the future? Mm -hmm. I think that I have a little bit of a split answer on that. So the, the end user, if they install Lubuntu, if they just boot up the system, they don't really need to know that it's Wayland if it just works. If it works, correct. Now, if we have items like that where there are still rough edges in two years from now, we will document those, yes. And we do plan on having just some general documentation on, yeah, this is what Wayland is, just a general brief overview. Um, and we'll likely point to some more, more verbose documentation on, on the specific elements there. But really, we are focusing on that user experience, doing that user experience first, um, making sure that that is solid before we ship the thing. What? Is uh, Samba support something new in Lubuntu? Samba support has been around for a good, a good amount of time. It's been around for I don't, maybe the last couple of LTS releases. So we've had it in the, in the file manager. I think the UX around that just has been a little bit shaky in past releases. That's really been polished. Um, but yeah. Samba support is, is something that should work out of the box. Yeah. yeah, I found it to be quite useful. Click on network and there yeah. are the two servers. Yeah, I, I do the same as well in my day job, actually. So. I may not get the terminology right, but uh, someone, being someone new to Lubuntu, I think you had said that they're trying to do something similar for um, all flavors of Linux, some, like a, a lightweight version. Is, was that right? That's something you'd mentioned? Yeah, I can explain that a little bit further okay, if you'd like. Sure, yeah. um, essentially, within Ubuntu, there is, of course, the main Ubuntu desktop everyone knows and loves. Um, that ships with GNOME, used to ship with Unity. Before that, I think it shipped with GNOME. Um, there are 10 flavors within the Ubuntu community. Now, I, I don't know that I can list all of them off the top of my head, um, but there's, for example, um, Zubuntu, Ubuntu Budgie, Ubuntu Cinnamon, um, Ubuntu Unity, Lubuntu, Zubuntu, well, I probably already said Zubuntu, um, and, and a wide variety of others. What's that? Mate. Mate. Um, am I missing any others? Ed Ubuntu, Ubuntu Studio. Um, I feel like I'm missing one more. What's that? Okay. I'll <laughs> um, and then there's uh, Ubuntu Chillin as well, so the Chinese, um, the Chinese Ubuntu flavor. Essentially, these are community managed products. Um, we have community teams on each one of these. There are miscellaneous canonical employees on, on some of these teams, but it's a really, it really is a community effort. Um, essentially, 
out of all 10 flavors, everyone has their own unique spin on Ubuntu, their, their own unique taste, their own unique flavor of Ubuntu, um, with Ubuntu as that core. Um, with the with Lubuntu being the most lightweight one, that is really our niche. That is, we want to have the, the most lightweight system out of all of those. And if you do comparisons between the flavors, you'll see that. Um, with the Ubuntu flavors as well, we all follow the same release cycle. Um, we all give go, no go decisions for our flavors. It's comparable to Fedora spins. Comparable, I would say. But it's it's more of a it's it's a it's really a community effort is what it is, and within that ecosystem as well. For example, I'm an I'm an Ubuntu core developer. Um, I can contribute to wider the, the wider sense of Ubuntu. Um, one of the things that I really really like to do is is maintain Vim within Ubuntu. That's that's one of my favorite things to do. And yes, anyone a Vim user in here? Perfect. <laughs> Um, so, so really, the one of the things that I'm, I'm looking to help other flavors with is how to contribute back to the community. Does that sort of answer your question? Yeah, I think that gives me fills in a few gaps. I a little thing, a little I'm curious about too is in, in an enterprise level using like uh, CentOS and you know other versions out there. Is there? I think you'd mentioned also, besides just Ubuntu, maybe they may try to get like a lightweight version, or maybe that's already existing for some of these other ones as well. Or maybe that was maybe I maybe I missed what you were saying earlier, not not just now, but in your presentation. Mm -hmm. um, the the lightweightness really comes from the desktop environment we're using. Mm -hmm. um, Really, the best way I would describe it, and I don't have that's true. I guess when we're talking server versus client, kind of mm -hmm. different. Yeah. 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 Any other questions? Uh, I heard a mention of uh, server, it, and I think I heard you recommend is it a viable OS for minimal server implementations comparable to other minimal Linux? distributions? I really don't see why not. It is based on Ubuntu. You would have the exact same tools you could use on Ubuntu server, except if you're somebody who prefers more of a GUI approach to, to it, um, it, certainly is, it certainly is an option. And I know a good handful of people that do use Lubuntu on their servers, whether it's their home lab or something a little bit more complex. Now, it's not meant to completely replace Ubuntu server, of course. They have their own specific features that are unique to them. But anything you could do in Ubuntu server, you could do in Lubuntu. We have time, I guess, for another one or two questions, if you folks are up for it. All right, then. Thank you very much for that. This is one of my favorite flavors, and I'm really glad you've been helping so much with it.